Hello, welcome my friends to this new episode. It's been a long time, but we have a lot of new stuff to show you. The test sequence is moving forward. Little by little we are developing new shots and solving new challenges we have been coming across. And results have been very positive since we have been included in the reel for the new version of Blender. So we are very happy with that and very enthusiastic to continue with this project. One of the biggest challenges we have had is getting a convincing look for the asteroids. Something apparently very simple, this kind of big potato with lots of craters. We are using a displacement maps and bump maps, using them interchangeably and playing with them mostly according to the distance from the camera. Uh, so we can save some resources because some of them, when they are very close to the camera, need more resolution and take a lot of memory, especially when there are too many of them. When animating the asteroids, which is basically rotating them, we do a bake of the animation so we can move in them in twos, uh, every two frames. So to make this work properly, we are going to change the interpolation of the keyframes to constant. So they jump from one frame to the other, giving the illusion of 12 frames per second over 24 frames per second. Another effect we need is when bullets impact on the asteroids. And in this case, we just use a basic particle system where we model two or three different variants of debris to use as the particles. Then in the compositor, we are using some effects to enhance the painterly effect on the textures of the, um, on the shading of the asteroids. For this, we use this filter called Kuwahara. There we played with the parameters that made the most sense for us, but there's still something missing. In heat film, we are uh, using some filters. One of those is the um, oil painting effect that helps to enhance the brush stroke effect on the asteroid texture. Plus a little bit of noise, which makes it look more organic in a way that is not working the same way when that noise is integrated into the texture. And a little bit of blur, which we use to compensate a little the increased sharpness of the Kuwahara effect. Of course, we had to deal with the uh, tracer effects. Again, just using a simple particle system, using the tracer as a particle with an emission shader for that luminous effect. Another case is this uh, deflector shield effect, uh, which is a simple geometry we built around the ship with a texture using a, some kind of decal, animated decal for the impact effect which we map to the place where the impact is supposed to happen. And this other case where we use for the explosions, which is just a plane uh, with the texture of the explosion and using at the same time a mask for using transparency. In this case, we enhanced it with a particle system with some little sparks so that we augment the effect of the explosion. And that's a simple particle like this. Then we give it the glowing effect in the compositing stage uh, because the glow effect tends to bleed over things that are uh, on top of the explosion, in this case the ship. So we did it in three layers, one behind the explosion, other on the explosion itself, another on top of everything. So that's a sample of the kind of challenges we have had to solve with the shots, so far at least. I hope you have enjoyed it and in the next video we are going to show you more tricks and techniques and cool stuff in general. Thank you all for watching, take care and we'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.